Hi, I'm Herm Gailey. We're here to work on the second of our three basics, and we talked about in our original video on the basics of, of horse training or horsemanship. The second basic is to have your horse good in the bridle. Warning, I'm doing the best I can, but there's going to be some overlap between these, but I think each of these basics certainly deserves a little more in-depth treatment than they got when I dealt with all three of them at once. So when we talk about a horse being good in the bridle, we're really looking for a horse that gives exactly as much as you ask him to do when you ask him to do it. You start this really well before you get on your horse. I teach my horses to flex, to yield on the ground when they're babies. It makes it way easier when you get on their back. And then you can get on to a more advanced horse like this one, but he's got all of those early steps in him. So it begins way back and then builds to a pretty high level over time. One of the very first things that I'll do with a horse when I start to teach them to yield to the bridle is to get them to simply bend their head laterally. So you can tip their nose, and maybe that's all you get, but if it's that soft, then you release. Tip their nose and hold till they give, which he did, and he'll stay about as long as I want him to. And you notice he doesn't just ratchet back to the center. He moves his head back slowly because he's not stressed over this, which is very important. If you get that rebound effect, you may have to work on softening your horse up more. You may have to sort of let them catch themselves on your hands to realize they can't just slingshot back. So, of course, you do it both ways. In these demonstrations, it's entirely possible I'll get stuck going one way and not complete the other side just to avoid burning up too much time on the video. So you want to get that horse to where they bend. I would never start this process on a horse, even an older horse probably, in a curb bit. I start universally in a snaffle because it's a better lateral device. If you have an older horse that's really stiff and you're, he's used to a, sh a shank bit or a curb bit, you could probably get away with teaching him to bend this way, but it would be better if you went back to that snaffle bit. You can always go back, you can stare up, step back to an earlier stage, fill that in, and pretty quickly progress to using the curb bit that maybe you've been riding him in. But this is a test for your older horses too. If you take a hold of your horse and he does this, he gets troubled and he's walking around, he's wiggling around, that means he's stiff in the bridle. That's that stiffness coming out as troubled motion. So you want to take their head and not get movement with their feet. Here is a trap you can get into. There's one very well-known clinician who I have certainly no comparison in terms of qualifications, but I strongly disagree with something that this particular guy does in his lateral flexion. He believes that you should take your horse the whole way around to their belly. I mean, way around. Here's the problem. The horses that I see him training, the horses that have gone through his program, tend to do this. When they get that far around, way far around, they'll tend to torque their head like this and point their ear at the ground because it gives them some relief. There's no place in God's green earth that that is a pleasing position for a horse. So you want to bend your horse far enough that it's a challenge to him, but he keeps the axis of his head perpendicular to the ground, not twisted off parallel to save himself and get those couple of extra inches that you're demanding that you don't really need. So don't get so carried away with saying, I can bend my horse the whole way around to the back of my boot and realize you're doing it by creating a situation where his neck is so twisted that it's really out of a normal position. Because, I mean, if your horse was walking around with his head and he, he doesn't like doing this, I'm glad he doesn't like doing it. But in that position, what's the first thing you'd say if you saw that? Well, what happened to that sucker's neck? Did you tie him up and, you know, he flew back and broke a vertebrae because it's not pleasing. And 
what will happen is they'll start doing that motion before they're that far around because it does ease this up. And you'll get a horse that when you ask them to turn around, they'll tip their ear to the ground and turn around like that. And then you got to work on fixing a problem that you created when you shouldn't have. So that's something on the lateral side. Now, lateral comes first because you work on the sides of their mouth. That's less sophisticated. That is easier for the horse to comprehend. It's more elementary. Over time, you're no longer going way out here. You start flexing your horse laterally from up in here. And you start to get more movement here, more flexion there in a lateral sense. So then over time, you've got a horse that bends, but they're also flexing. That makes it easier when you transition into putting two reins on them and asking them to flex in the bridle. You can take a hold of them and having done that with both sides, then when you do it simultaneously, your horse is going to soften up, move into the bridle. Now he's a little over bridled there, which I don't really want. A couple of ways to get past that. The easiest way is to use more leg and less hand. Maybe make sure he's going forward a little more. This guy has a natural tendency to get behind the vertical. It's not something I encourage, even though it's pretty common, say in the random horse world where, where I show, you'll see loads of horses behind the vertical. I just don't think it's good body position or good body mechanics. So you want to have your horse in soft, and then you just take a little bit of that slack out and they stop. But you want your horse to give back equally to both sides of their mouth so that they get into that correct position with their head at the same time driving with your legs so that they engage. And they're not just creating a position, but they're creating engagement. Frankly, it's harder to do this at a walk than at a trot. But if you drive him forward, you can see him starting to bend his hocks, reach underneath himself. And if you stop from this position, you'll see that he bends his hock joint more than he would if he was just all strung out and had to pull his hocks underneath him as if they were a trailer hanging out behind him. Here, they're part of his drive mechanism and he can just bring them right up underneath himself. So those are the very basics of basic number two given to the bridle. And you can use this, again, for any number of things. Obviously, you're not just going to be walking around. And as you add speed, the degree of difficulty goes up. You'll probably find that you have a horse that's really good doing this at a standstill or at a walk. When you pick up a trot, they don't hold that soft, collected frame. So you just have to work through it. Speed. Forward motion adds a degree of difficulty. You want to keep your legs active and be driving your horse forward into the bridle, or you'll either get a stop, if you just take your legs off, you're going to get a stop in a trained horse. Or if your horse is going forward and you're just hanging on their head, you'll end up getting position without engagement, which is kind of what I'm causing him to do, except it, it just doesn't make sense to him. We don't do that. So you don't want to just create a head position. You want to create some engagement. And that gets you to a place where you have motion and you've got some softness in the bridle. So you can start in the next basic to use your legs to influence where that motion goes and keep him in a pleasing and efficient position. So those are some thoughts on the use of your bridle and giving to your bridle. In the original video on this, I suggested that maybe people are going to think this is so simple that it's not worth their time. Go home and ride your horse. Do a few basic little tests. Something I like to do is this.
walk your horse forward, pick up, go right into a backup. Walk your horse forward. Is he walking forward? Is he getting crooked like that? Because this horse will do that. See, he gets the wiggles. Harder than it looks. Take a hold, go right into the backup. Pretend there is no stop. Pretend that all you're doing is walking up there and backing up. And there shouldn't be a brace. There shouldn't be that moment of stiffness as the horse comes to a stop. He should go through the stop because to reverse motion, he obviously has to do that. But there shouldn't be that braced moment. There shouldn't be that stiffness. Because what you'll see a lot of times is a horse that does this. You'll go up, you'll take a hold, they stop, and then you pull them back, and everything is sort of herky-jerky. You want that to be smooth, and your horse then is showing you that he's really good in the bridle. So there's a test. And you can say, how much does it take to bend him laterally? I mean, can you do it like that? Now, see, I've been after him a little. He wanted to move his feet. You can always go back to this simple basic. Make sure it's always there. But you shouldn't have to have anything but that. It should be that easy. If it isn't, maybe the basics weren't as good as you thought they were. Go forward. This is a finished horse. He's sluggish. Watch. Is he going forward? Test that. Are you going forward? No, you're not going forward. I bet you can. So if your horse isn't go, going forward, give him a wake-up call. But check out those basics, and you're going to find some holes. I always do. Right there, I found a hole in a horse that is finished, but he's a backslider. A lot of them are. Constant maintenance. So even if you go home and you test these things, and your horse is perfect, congratulations. Now you get to work on it every day to maintain it. So those are some thoughts on softening your horse in the bridle, getting him responsive to the bridle, and sort of combining a couple of these basics. Hope it helps. Not saying it's the only thing to do, but it's what I do. And if it helps you, you're welcome to it. Beep.